Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Greg Hawk and I'm very excited to share with you my quick tutorial on the basics for PySpark data frames and PySpark SQL. I'm going to make these next 10 to 15 minutes interactive, fun, and most importantly, easy to follow along. And if you want to actually follow along and write the code yourself, I'm going to tell you now how you can do that. Firstly, if you're not familiar with my environment, I'm just using Google Colab. So go ahead and search Google Colab and you can spin up a new notebook so that we can write code no matter who we are. It's not going to look any different depending on what computer you're using. To get Spark set up in your Colab environment, I have a link down below. So thanks to these people who gave out this code. So all you need to do is copy this line, number six, and then enter that number eight, seven here. So take that code and then paste that in another one. And then this one is finally, we have Spark and that's gonna take a moment to run, but there you go, that's it. If you didn't see the following message here about the Spark context, then send me a comment and I'll write down to you below. And the only other piece to our setup is just getting the Titanic data. I chose Titanic data from Kaggle. You may have heard of it. Just go to kaggle.com, type in uh, Titanic, go to the data, and you can download train.csv. We're going to use that table to play around with. And then once you get it, you can just go ahead and upload it into this files over here. And now we can go ahead and load that into PySpark. So we're going to load it into what's called a data frame. So we'll just say load the, load the CSV into a data frame or a PySpark data frame. And you do this very easily just by writing Titanic DF. So get some variable name for it. So I'm going to call it Titanic data frame. And we'll set that equal to spark.read.csv, spark.read.csv, train.csv. So that's the name right there is the first argument that should match this name over here. And then header equals true because it does actually have a header if you were to look into the, the CSV file. So if I do that, that's not going to do too much. I'm just running it to get time going because it's some of this stuff takes a little bit of time. And then Titanic DF, if I if I output that, it's going to give it this nice table. So this is the, the same as it would look in Excel, except now we're looking at it through PySpark. But there's a big difference here is that it's actually not all being run on this machine, meaning we're not getting all of the data back to this actual machine. What it's doing is Spark delegates this task and splits it up into different machines. And we're not going to talk too much about this because it's kind of confusing and not totally necessary to understand. But the point is that Spark is delegating this to other machines and running in parallel as much as it can. And it's only going to be able to show these 20 results unless we explicitly ask for more because it's not actually on this machine. If you want to read more, link down below about this topic, but it's not too necessary. Tables have what we call a schema. So a table is made up of rows and columns. A row is a data point and a column is a particular attribute about the row. So we have some passenger ID, which is going to be a unique field. It's a way of saying, okay, no, this this person is different than, than all of these people. Some of these values might be the same, like the sex is male and this person might be male and these are female, except this is going to be unique and probably their new name is unique as well. But the point is we have a schema. So we have a bunch of different variable names and those are going to be some data type. So to get the schema, we have our variable name, whatever we called it, and then we can do print, print schema. And that shows us that we have uh, this table it just means that root means the table really. And so passenger ID, that's the first column. You can see they're all strings. Okay. And that's not good because these don't really look like strings, do they? But technically you can represent a string with anything. So actually what we want to do is instead we add another uh, parameter argument here and we say infer schema is equal to true because otherwise it's just going to read it all as strings. Except now it's inferring the schema, meaning, oh, this looks like an integer. I'm going to treat it as if it's an integer. Age, okay, it actually read it in as a floating point value. It could, it might have read it as an int. But here, fair, it is actually a floating point value now. And if we see down below, we can see uh, if we print it again, sorry. So now we have survived as an integer, passenger as an integer age is actually a double. So I guess there's probably floating point values in there somewhere. And fair is a double. Okay. 
So now that we understand what kind of data we're working with, we can look at particular Spark functions that you might want to do on these data frames. So if we have this uh, Titanic data frame here, well, it's a data frame. There's so many different functions, and I've linked down below the many different functions that you can use. But some of them that we might want to use, well, we might want to limit how many things we see. Okay, so limit five. And so I just want to see five things, for example. That's a lot better. And pretty much all of this SQL stuff, if you're familiar with SQL, this will be easier. But if you're not, it's still going to make sense. The, pretty much everything implemented here is just taking it from SQL and doing it in PySpark data frames for speed purposes and for uh, basically merging with other libraries and Python stuff very easily. So if we're talking SQL, the, the hello world of SQL would be Titanic DF. You can write dot select. Guess what? Select star. That's going to work. And that means select means grab specific columns. And so star means all the columns. This is exactly the same thing as just doing Titanic DF because there's, that's already what all the columns are. But you could ask for something in particular or multiple things in particular, like the passenger ID and the survived column. Okay, and I don't really care too much about what the actual data is, but technically zero is if zero is if they didn't survive, one is if they did survive, and here are those two columns there, and you can kind of combine these things, and so if I have this, then I can limit it as five, like that, and I'm going to always do that. Something very common in SQL and with all tabular data, we might only want specific rows, and so to do that, we would do something, and I'm going to copy this a lot, Titanic DF dot where and an alias or exactly the same thing as filter. So it's actually saying filter right there, where is an alias for filter. We can do it like this. So if we only wanted, for example, the, the rows where their age is greater than 25. Okay, so we can see only some of them are greater than 25. We can do this very easily with Titanic DF dot age is greater than 25. That works. That's all you have to do. It's really, really nice. And again, like always, going to limit to five. There's a lot of different combinations of conditions you might want where this is one condition. We could combine it very easily by putting this in brackets. I believe the brackets are necessary. And then we do not double and and a double or symbol, but single. So single and would be for and. So I could say all the people where their age is greater than 25 and their Titanic, their survived, is equal, equal, equal to one. So these are all the people that are older than 25 and they survived. You might wanna do some aggregational results and that's just a fancy word for saying, oh, maybe I want the average of the fair column. Maybe I want the minimum, the maximum. I'll do this on the fair column by saying Titanic DF dot ag. Okay, so this is for aggregate. It's gonna take a dictionary where I'm gonna pass it keys where the keys are columns and values where they're strings of what we want to do. So I'll give you one, which is just fair, and then the the value. So key, key and strings, and then colon, and then value and string as well is going to be say AVG. Okay, and that's just something that Spark knows that you're saying, okay, I wanted the average. So all I did was it got all the fair values and it took the average of them and there you go. Maybe instead of getting the overall average of the fair, so this just calculated over all of them and then summed them and then divided by the whole number. But you might wanna do this per group, depending on what we call a group. So I could define a group as saying the, the, the class of the person basically. So I believe a higher number is the a better class. It could be the opposite, I don't remember. But if we treat each of these as a class, then there's going to be three classes, one, two, and three, and we can compute the average for each of these things. So this is basically a, a grouped average, and we can do this by the concept of group by. So that would be Titanic DF dot group by, and they actually, the, the first spelling wise, they, they have it twice. You can do either one actually. And so here I'm going to give the name of a column. So I'm going to group by, what do I want to group by? Well, that's, that's how I define the group. So I want that to be the class for our example. And then now that we've done that group there, we can do aggregation pretty much like normal. It's a little bit different given that we have a group, but you're gonna write it pretty much the same way. Fair is average, okay? So we're gonna get 
the, the aggregated fares average, except it's grouped by the person class. But there you go. For each class, we have their associated average. And since I know it probably bugged your eyes when you read 132, it bugged my eyes too. So we can easily order this with order by and then pass a column name like this one, P class, and it's going to do ascending by default. If we wanted to do the opposite way, so it's going to go one, two, three. If instead we wanted to do uh, the other way, we could do ascending equals false. So that means don't go ascending, go descending. And so instead it's going to go three, two, one, and there you go. This next example is really just to show that you can again combine these things a lot where you have to say this complicated thing. Well, okay, I want to compute the average, not per class, except I want to compute the average only for people that have an age greater than 25. Okay, we haven't combined these things yet. So we can do Titanic DF. We only want the people over 25. So that's simply where or filter where the Titanic DF dot age, where that is bigger than 25. And then we can compute the average. So we can say dot egg with that same dictionary. And so that is going to be fair and then average. So we combine filter and average. So you can see this value is a little bit different and it's not surprising that it's a little bit higher based on what the data is, but that's not important. Now we're gonna do something really, really fun and very useful is if you're familiar with the pandas function apply, it's gonna look very similar to that, but if you're not, that's totally okay. The, the point is that we can make a new column based off of our existing tables. So say for example, we wanted to, instead of having fair as a floating point value here, we wanted a new column where we could just do some function on this value to get it to say round down. So we can just do that with int in int in Python. If it's int of 71.2, it'll do it 71 int of 7.9 will be just the integer of seven. So we'll do this for example. And the point is that you can do any function that you want really a lot more complicated stuff than this, but we can add a column in here based off of these values. And the way you're writing it is maybe a little bit more code than, than the other stuff we've been writing so far. But really, it's just a couple imports. So from pyspark.sql.types, we need to import whatever type that the output of your function is going to be. And so for us, you, you can just look up uh, the types that you need. So for us, we're going to output an integer. We don't care about what's actually inputted into the function, which is this floating point value. The output is going to be a, a integer. So we need to do that. From pyspark.sql.types, we're going to import something called integer type. And how did I know to do that? Just looked it up. You should probably look it up too for whatever you would need. And we're going to use something that I'm not going to explain too much. The concept of is pyspark.sql.functions import UDF. Okay. And this stands for user defined function. Feel free to look more about that up. Uh, but basically the point is that you can use, make your own function and do that in PySpark. So we can define whatever function we want in just a normal Python. I'll call it round float down. So it's really just converting it to an integer. We don't need to specify the data type here, but keep in mind, that's going to be a floating point value for what we're using it for. I can return the int of x. So that's all our function is going to do. Again, if I, if I input it 13.6, it'd be 13, 20.6, it'd be 20. If we have this function just in Python, we can convert it to Spark function or Spark UDF very easily by just getting a new name for it. So round float down, but UDF, because it's going to be what's called a UDF now. And that is going to be just calling that function that we imported up here or class, whatever it is, doesn't even matter. UDF of round float down. So this is just, we're going to pass it the name of our function. Okay. So that's just passing it this thing here. It's saying, no, convert this thing to a UDF that has the corresponding type. And notice the, the brackets here on the integer type. It's actually, um, it's not just a, a value or whatever. So here we pass these things. We created a UDF and now we can use this to make a new column very easily. Titanic DF dot select round float down of UDF. Okay. So this is just calling our function and then passing the name, this is really like awesome syntax because it doesn't look like it's doing what you think it's doing. But if we pass it the name of a column here, 
Remember, fair, this has to be a name of the column in the data frame that we're talking about, and it is over here. Check this out. There's no module named PySpark.sql.function. Yeah, I'm just kidding. So functions, sorry, there should be an S there. And then after that, look, what it did is it made this new column that it automatically named it the name of the function, but it did make a new column. And so we can, first of all, make this a little cleaner, which is dot alias. This makes a new name for this column. You could call it fair rounded down, for example. Okay, so here it, here it is. And if we wanted this included with our other stuff, because it looks kind of awkward here, well, we can just select whatever other columns that we wanted. And so maybe we wanted the, the passenger ID, so we know what person it is. And then sure, that just as is, that would be fine. Now we have the passenger IDs, they're fair rounded down. And if you really wanted to prove that this actually was the fair rounded down corresponding, you could see it right here. That's what it is. If you happen to have multiple data frames and you need to do what's called a join, so basically merge results from tables, you can do a join in this. It's gonna look very, fairly similar, but I'm not gonna do that for you. Just feel free to look that up, it's pretty easy. Before you run away, there's one really important piece that I can basically explain all in one very, very quickly is if you know SQL, then all you have to do to use SQL in here explicitly is to do spark.sql, spark.sql, and then you would write some query. So select star from, okay, from what? Because we don't have a database here. Well, what you'd have to do beforehand, I'll just add a new block in here, is, and there's a couple different ways you can do it, but the easiest way is just to write this thing create or replace uh, temp view. Okay, so here, if we call this, we can give it a name, and so I'll call it Titanic. So after we do this thing, then this thing exists in the database. So if I do from Titanic, well, this now works because I input it in there. And so whatever tables that you have in your uh, Spark SQL thing, and if you're in a company, you're learning this for a company, then they're probably already gonna have a bunch of them set up and they're not gonna be views, they'll be actual tables. But you can write whatever SQL you want here. I'm not gonna do a ton of it for you, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one.